This video continues uh, modeling with exponential functions and we're just going to look at the compound interest formula and the continuously compounded interest formula. These are specialized formulas for money. So um, A is going to be the final amount. That's the output. P is your initial amount. It's it's P because uh, it stands for principal, which is the initial amount of money that you have. Okay, and then R is just like before the interest rate, so you're going to convert the per percent to a decimal by moving the decimal two places to the left. The new variable N N is the number of times the money is compounded in one year. So you're going to be told that in the problem. And you can see that you're dividing the interest rate by N and you're uh, multiplying the time by N. So there's two N's in the formula. And you have to have this formula memorized. This is called the compound interest formula. So for example, if you have this one, $7,520 uh, $7, is deposited into an account at 3.25% annual percentage rate compounded quarterly. Write the function A, the amount of investment after T years. Okay, so A of T, function notation, equals P, your principal is your initial money amount, 7520, times 1 plus the R is your percentage rate converted to a decimal, so 0 0.0325 over, and then see where it says compounded quarterly. So quarterly means four times a year, so that means that n is four. So we have divided by four here, and divided and raised to the fourth power here, and t is our input. Okay, so we're, t is the years, a is final amount. You don't have to tell me T is years here because this is a specialized formula. T is always in years. Okay, so that's our function. And then it says how much money will be in the account after five years. So that's simply we're going to put five in for T. and this is an exponent here. So with this calculator we shouldn't have a problem with that, but some other older calculators you might run into a problem when you try to raise that to the 20th power if you don't use parentheses. But with this calculator you have this button that's going to raise that and you put both the 4 and the 5 in the parentheses there. So after five years, you will have, unit is money, 8,841.08. And of course, you would round to the hundredths because money rounds to the hundredths. All right, now let's look at a second one. This is interesting. It says, how long will it take an investment to double if it is invested into an account? with a 2% interest rate that is compounded monthly. Okay, so once you see the word compounded, after it is going to be what your N is. Compounded monthly would be 12 times a year. Okay, your P, what is your P? Well, if you read the problem again, you are told nothing about your initial amount. Your R is 2% or 0.02. So we have R, N, and we're, um, we're looking for T, so we don't know T. So we don't know P, we don't know A, we don't know T. Okay, well here's a, a very important trick to know that's going to carry on to the different types of problems. Let's go ahead and write down A equals P, 1 plus 0 0.02 over 12 to the 12 T. Okay. So we don't know the initial amount, we don't know the final amount, but what we do know is we want to know how long it's going to take the investment to double. 
Okay, so what that means is you can, since this is always the first thing you divide out, the initial value, you can just pick whatever amount you want. So if your principal is $1,000, how long will it take for it to become 2000 If your principal is $100, how long would it take to be $200? So that's the trick to these. When you don't know the principal or the final amount and you're told how long will it take to double or triple, you can just make up a number because look at what's going to happen. Let's say I'll let P be a thousand. Then if, if I know I want to find T and I want to know how long it's going to take to double, I'll put I'll double it. I'll put 2,000 here. Now watch what happens. The, always the very first thing you do to solve this equation is you divide out the initial value. So 2,000 divided by 1,000 is 2. Alright, let's figure out what 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 12 is. Okay, it's a very long value. So I'm going to use the storing capabilities of the calculator. I'm going to write 2 equals 1.0017 down to the 12t power, but I'm going to use the storing capabilities of the calculator. I'm going to leave it right there. All right, now, how would you solve this? Well, you can't divide out the 1.0017. Remember, you're solving for t. It's an exponential equation, so you have to take the log, natural log of both sides. and then use the power rule okay and then to solve for t now you've got multiplication you got 12 times t times natural log of 1.0017 so we can undo that by dividing by 12 times natural log of 1.0017 that's going to cancel all of that and leave you with t whatever you do on one side you have to do on the other now I don't want rounding error, so I'm going to use this calculator. So when I put this in the calculator, I already have 1.00166666667 on my screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in natural log of 2 divided by 12 times natural log, and I'm going to just go get that. I think that will work. Ah, it won't work with the horizontal bar. Okay, so I can do this uh, natural log of 2 divided by parentheses 12 natural log of that. And that will work. So now we'll, we'll try not to round in, in the middle of the problem, but that's 34.69 years. Make sure you put your units down. So you could do this if you like using that. Natural log of 2 divided by 12 times natural log of, where did that 1.007 come from? 1 plus 0.02 divided by 12. So you put that in there like that. Get the same thing. If you, if you did round, it's not the end of the world. I don't love it, but let's see what you would get. Well, let's use the, clear that. Let's see what you would get. So there's it. I rounded and I would get 34.007 so you would you would be off by 0.6 so try not to round all right let's look at continuously compounded interest these two formulas kind of go together they both have the word compounded you use this formula a equals p e the RT I use I call it the PERT formula when the problem says it's compounded continuously. If the word is continuously, you cannot use this one. You have to use the PERT formula. So, A is still final amount, P 
P is still initial amount, R is still interest rate, T is still time in years. It's just got this E in here. So $5,000 is your initial amount. E to the 7% is 0 0.07. And then T. So that's your formula. And then we want to know the value after 15 years. So A of 15 equals 5,000 e to the point oh seven times fifteen. Your E button with the exponent is right here. So point oh seven times fifteen. And you get fourteen thousand two hundred eighty eight point twenty six dollars. Okay, here's another example. How long will it take an amount to triple if it is invested into an account with an interest rate of five and two thirds percent compounded continuously? So compounded continuously means use PERT. Okay, and we are looking for T. How long? We want to know when the amount will triple if it's an invested into an account with an interest rate, and I gave you another mixed number, and the way that I did that, you can't really help but having to round because five and two thirds is 5.66 repeating. Convert that to a decimal by dividing by 100, and that's interest rate 0.056667. Let's take it out as much as we can. So I tried to just throw that in there so you could have practice. That's 0.566 repeating percent. So that's what R is. Okay. So now go back. Do you remember how to do this? So I know R. I'm looking for T. I don't know P and I don't know A. Do you remember how to do it? It says I need. I want it to triple. Well, we can pick a value. Let's say we have $100. If we want this $100 to triple, that's $300. Here's why you can pick it. Anything you want is because to solve for T, the first thing you always need to do is divide out that A value. And that gives you 3 e equals E to the point 0.056667T. How do you solve for T when it's an exponent? You take the natural log of both sides. Use the power rule. And then natural log of E is 1. So 0 0.056667 times T, let's divide by 0 0.056667 and find out what T is. Okay, so natural log of 3, and I'm going to use the sideways division key. So 0 0.056666666. I'll just take it out a lot of decimals. And you get T equals 19.39 years. Let's see how far off we are if I take away some of these sixes. Yeah, you don't get, you don't have a problem with that. You won't have a rounding error with that.